Hello Internet. I would like to call this video The Past is a Foreign and Very Wordy Land. It's a video in which I describe the tendency for books or chapters in set books in the past, particularly around the 18th century, to have very long descriptive titles and give examples of such for a little laugh. Now, I realize that this is not just something that happened in the 18th century, it's a trend that's still going on. However, back in those days, they actually took it rather seriously, at least at first. The parodies, of course, arrived fairly quickly, unlike today where almost every one of those are either a homage or a parody. However, I decided to do a quick and dirty little laugh video about some of my favorite, very descriptive book and chapter titles in a fashion that I've always particularly loved them, because basically you read the title and you can skip the rest of the chapter of the book. So enjoy. Title number one. You try to see if you can guess what this is about. Letters from Paraguay by a gentleman of liberal education and considerable property who, having been disappointed in his hopes of happiness with a beloved female to relieve the distress of his mind, resolved to travel. Title number two, a chapter title this time, from The Adventures of Pinocchio by Carlo Collodi. How it happened that Maestro Cherry Carpenter found a piece of wood that wept and laughed like a child. After that, the rest of the plot mostly gives itself. In this, the third title, we for the first time get to Daniel Defoe, who was really famous about this. Later, we will get to his more famous book, Robinson Crusoe. But as to right now, we will start with the fortunes and misfortunes of Mole Flanders, who was born in Newgate and during a life of continued variety for three score years beside her childhood, was 12 years a whore, five times a wife, whereof once to her own brother, 12 year a thief, eight year a transported felon in Virginia, at last grew rich, lived honest, and died a penitent. Does any of you actually need to read the book after this? The next video was from a time where the first parodies of this particular thing had started to appear, and this might well be said to be one of them. I still like it though, just because how absolutely spoilerific the whole title is. So, yeah. The affecting history of two young gentlewomen who were ruined by their excessive attachment to the amusement of the town to which are added many practical notes by Dr. Typo. Yeah, beat that spoilerifics even better because that was definitely meant seriously. It was from a charity dealing with uh, prostitutes, particularly street prostitutes, and it was basically trying to keep people out of sin. So let's start. Modern seduction or innocence betrayed, consisting of several histories of the principal Magdalens received into that charity since its establishment, very proper to be read by all young persons as they exhibit a faithful picture of those arts most fatal to youth and innocence and of those miseries that are the never ending consequences of a departure from virtue. So yeah, guys, read this or you might slip into never-ending miseries. Also during this period was the first of the horror novels, or what we would call horror novel, particularly the gothic horror novels. These very soon devolved into a very formula formulaic and very, how shall we put it, sentimental style where basically everything was rather boring. However, this particular title at least tells you what you're gonna read. The Spectres, or Lord Oswald and Lady Rosa, including an account of the Marchioness of Savetti, who was basely consigned to a dungeon beneath her castle by her eldest son, whose cruel avarice plunged him into the commission of the worst crimes that stains the annals of the human race. The book itself is probably boring and predictable, but at least, you know, you sort of have an idea of what is going to come. Your sure, novels were also starting to get popular in its time. And this one, while falling into the whole thing that we're discussing, at least leaves off before the end of the story, as you will see. The travels of Hildebrand Bauman, Esquire, into Carnoveria, Torpineria, Olfactaria and Ordinante in New Zealand and in the powerful kingdom of Loxo Voloptot, 
written by himself who went on shore in the adventure's large cutter and escaped being cut off and devoured with the rest of the boat's crew by happening to be a shooting in the woods where he was afterwards unfortunately left behind by adventure. At least this one sort of only ends the title before the denouement of the story. Returning to the famous Daniel Defoe, we are moving into his most famous of books. Uh, most of you will of course know this one, but at least if you haven't read it, you will now know basically the plot of it. The Life and Strange Surprising Adventures of Robinson Crusoe of York, Mariner who lived eight and twenty years all alone in an uninhabited island on the coast of America near the mouth of the great river Orunok, having been cast ashore by shipwreck wherein all the men perished but himself, with an account of how he was at last strangely delivered by pirates. So, yeah, apart from Friday, you basically have the entire plot there. This next one is not a very long one, and it doesn't as such go into details with the plot, but I mean, at least you can also see the concept of the past as a strange land or a foreign land in the last uh, particular part of this title, since I very much doubt the word joyful would have been used today. A token for children, being an exact account of the conversion, holy and exemplary lives and joyful deaths of several young children. Yeah, joyful deaths of several young children. The 18th century was weird. And finally, at the end, one of the most famous books in Western religious uh, literature over the last five centuries. A book that literally made Puritanism or Puritan Christianity into a thing and had a lasting effect upon particularly the English world and its relationships to the Catholic Church. Basically, we are going to John Bunyan. The Pilgrim's Progress, from this world to that which is to come, delivered under the similitude of a dream, wherein is discovered the manner of his letting out his dangerous journey and late arrival and the divine country. No, I don't know what it means either. I don't think John Bunyan did either. He was a religious fanatic and he was even more weird than the century itself. Well, there we are. A quick and dirty little video that I hope could at least get a bit of a chuckle out of some of you. I might do more of these, though honestly the rest of the ones I have are just a bit eh, there's not too much fun to be said about them. I do hope, however, that this amused you, and if you want to see something more about literature as well as my other things, let me know, and um, yeah, until next time, I have been The Sage, and I wish you all a very happy day.